Yo, what up? It's Big Dan. Big Dan. Welcome you to another episode of The Blurred Bar. The bar is now open, my bar flies. Welcoming you to sit and sip with us, where the takes are hot. The takes are hot. The drinks are cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we serving up that cocktails and culture. That's right, that nerd culture through a black lens. Show them Sterling. Okay, you All know right. how do it. Talk to them. And without Dan. further ado, let me introduce myself. Talk it to, is talk Big to Dan. Talk to people. Rodan. Okay. Coming at you live from the 215. Your comic book connoisseur. Your Somalia of sci-fi and superheroes. Here again to welcome you to another episode of The Blurred Bear. One more time. One more time. One for each head. We in yeah. here. We in yeah. here. And as you can see, I am never alone. I have my compatriots here with me. Compatriots. And if you look to my right. Oh, that's me. Compatriots. Oh, that's me. Is my turn? Okay. Like that fire on. Okay, listen. Yes. Listen, it's the Blurred Bar. And you know what we do. Dan and Jay Hawk, Argent here with the crew. It's the relegating, delegating, never losing, always gaining, wax poetic. Y'all stay waiting for the fences we keep aiming. Who they be? Triumvirate. And they ain't black exasperating. Only say it once or listen up to what we say it. We do it for the people so our light is never fading. Ace, trainer, Argent, stalwart shield of South Philly, welcoming you to the bar of the blurs. But I'm just one of your three hosts. That's a bad man. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you want to see Shut bad man. Mouth. The man coming after me. The man on my right. Okay. Uh, yo, check it. Let's go. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Tis I, hailing from the land of samurai, sakes, and shinobis. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> A little slippy. Oh, AK, a little slippy in the building. Hey. Uh. <laughs> you don't get an intro. You don't get one. Don't even get one. It's fine. No, you go ahead. I'm going to let you go ahead and try again. Are you, are you sure? Why not? All right. We having fun tonight, baby. We yeah. Are indeed. <laughs> Tis I. Two thirds of us are having fun. <laughs> Well, three fourths. The bar. I'm sure the barfly is having a great time. Oh gosh! I'm sorry. You were saying, sir. Mm. All I was saying is that it's me, Jayhawk. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, are you sure? I don't think. I don't that's think what this, it is. I don't think this is what it is. Uh, that's all that happened. Good he's evening, saying, everyone. <laughs> he's saying that's all y'all going to get. So, without further ado, our first and only segment, booze. News. News. And reviews. Reviews. So our drunken master for the evening, Lil Slippy, a.k.a. Jayhawk, is going to... Okay. A.k.a. Godzilla personified. (laughs) Only one name. What? This To go by. (laughs) No other name. But I appreciate you. I tried so hard. We trying. (laughs) (laughs) I still give myself a hug. And we haven't even started oh, drinking yet. Speak for yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the booze for today oh, uh, comes from two locals, which is Philadelphia's first black-owned craft brewing company. Let's go. Um, shout out to them. And this is actually brought to us uh, by Val. Thank you, Val. Um, shout out to them as well. This Appreciate you. A great choice. And uh, what we have here is Nubian, which is a brown ale. It's brewed with a complex malt base. This beer has a beautiful brown complexion with aromas and flavors of fresh baked bread, roasted nuts, and medium roasted coffee with a light touch of sweetness in the finish. So please, (laughs) tap up. You late? No, I'm good. I'm fine. He good? All right, cool. All right. (laughs) Getting it's, real. It's not here. I'm getting real. So, uh, <laughs> big Dan, your thoughts, please. My thoughts. Um, so normally, not a big coffee drinker. I would say about an average beer drinker. Ales, leaning more to ciders, meads. Ciders, great. Uh, but this is not bad. Like I, it's like I said, the hints of coffee might be a little bit much for me. I don't know if I need that in my beer, but it's good. It's good. It's very drinkable, smooth. You're not really like doing anything or damaging your insides by taking part. <laughs> like it's very good. 
So they know what they're doing at two locals. Um, it's a very strange bar. <laughs> it is. How many drinking gourds are there? Uh, drinking horns? Drinking horns. Drink I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to give it 3.5. Three point, okay. Mm. I like 3. it. 3.5. I like it. Um, I think this is great, but I'm, I'm also like the nicest guy, <laughs> the nicest guy in Night City, I promise. Um, I like the dark one dark. Like it's a darker, it's it's a dark beer, but it's not so heavy that like with the with other darker beers, like, you know, with your Guinnesses or whatever. Um, and the comboing with the dark roast of the coffee comes together really, really, really nice. Um, I can really taste the the hints of bread. It tastes like artisan <coughs> bread. Like it got seeds on it. Like it's it's good. Um, I think this is magnificent. I can just keep drinking this. Um, but it's nice to like sip it and let it breathe too. Four four point two potions, potion bottles. This times four point two, magnificent. I'm going to buy more. Two locals, everybody. Two, locals. two locals. Um. So I'm not a beer drinker. I'm not a coffee drinker am i the only co- i'm the only coffee dude There's yeah i mean i feel like the bar flies know that it's my personality so uh so this and i feel like there is a taste of hops of it, yeah i it's like the similar feel the, the mouth feel something like that where like the top of my mouth and the back it's just Say that all to say, for me, a lot going on subjectively, <laughs> uh, not objectively, but subjectively, it would be like a 2.5, um, only because it's just not my preferred taste. Um, but I do think that, you know, with what they're doing, I think it's a great thing. I do enjoy the artwork on it, you know, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> That's that's all I that's all I really have to say about that. Unfortunately, apparently, buy apparently anyway. Big Dan's sitting on that side. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it really I, I hate to say it like that. Like I think I definitely think that a lot of people would appeal to this or like this. Obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I think so. Uh, <laughs> I think so. You it, should try it. Everybody should try I it. Do, I do think fun. people should try it. Um, yeah, don't take his word for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think it's. I think it's good for somebody. Don't it's walk into two locals me. and be like, hey, Jayhawk told me to try this. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't want those kind of people. He said y'all was trash. <laughs> right. I'm right. trying here to, I'm here to prove it. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, oh boy. It is what it is. All right. Well, I think this is like my first, oh no, who got my first two? Onyx Equinox, I think, got my first two. You yeah. had some opinions. You had opinions. This feelings, is not though. Onyx Equinox in drinkable form, though. This is good. We are. All right, so start. we got news. Um, Jayhawk, I know you got some news for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What you got? Inform the people. Speak, Siege. What I got, you can't get it from your mama. What I got, you can't get it from your... Uh. Remember that? Okay. M.I.A.? No. No, yeah. I know what you're referencing. Did you? But as did you, know you that play time? M.I.A. in your car did you know all that? the time. It's true. That's not true. It was, not it was the summer of 2014. It really was. <laughs> not all the time now, was there. but back then, if you got in Josh's car, you knew MIA was on. Bunk, dunk, bunk. <laughs> Please continue. So, Evangelion, um, the final Evangelion anime film opened in Japan uh, on Monday. Uh, as of this recording, and was the biggest opening in the anime franchise ever, bringing in 7.6 million U.S. dollars um, on the back of two locals. Strikes. Do it. (laughs) Oh, it certainly did. Find that button. Um, On the back of 539,000 tickets sold, uh, let's see, Thrice Upon a Time was the highest opening had the highest opening day for IMAX format in Japan ever at seven hundred and forty thousand dollars U.S. dollars. Um, so it's it's been pretty it's been doing pretty good. Um, Demon Slayer, the movie, uh, still holds the record for the best three day opening, but that was only at two point two seven million. So I'm sure Evangelion has. I think like mathematically, that. it's it has to happen, but we'll see. Right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I mean. All the weebs came together at one time and like, is it a stein? So uh that's so it's interesting, but I do think that this brings about the question of like it'll be interesting to see how Evangelion does worldwide and how um Demon Slayer does. And this would be like I think the true 
old versus new anime <laughs> kind of a thing going on. So we on. finally have our question answered. Yeah. Is a new school anime like Attack on Titan better than old school anime like Naruto? You don't want that heat. <laughs> um, outside of that, uh, we have news with uh, Megalobox. I don't know if we talked about it, but Megalobox 2 comes out April 4th. So really excited for that. Um, Yasuke, Netflix to premiere Yasuke anime on April 29th worldwide. Thank Let's God. Go. It's, um, it, it's a lot. A lot. So much quality. So yeah. much. And uh, Flying Lotus is going to be composing the score for the series. So oh, that should be pretty dope. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Super Nintendo World Osaka now set for March 18th public opening Ooh. with COVID-19 restrictions in place. Okay. Um, Super Nintendo World Osaka will offer up Super Mario Kart and Yoshi's Adventure rides, as well as interactive elements supported by magnetic power-up bands that each visitor receives upon entry, along with collecting coins and keeping score. Players will be able to collect stamps and complete challenges within the app to win more prizes. These include time challenges against other people and key challenges. Yo, so. you, you know what's going to happen. Don't take don't take your family thinking yeah. you and your kids are going to have a good time. <laughs> this is this is not one. Your child needs to move cuz I need to get my coin. <laughs> <laughs> He's standing in the spot where I was supposed to get my coin and if I don't get my coin, I will have to hurt your child. I think uh that's how I feel. I definitely think that um, hopefully they do have a kid section. That nah, you, that nah, you can free take, for all, everybody. Families can migrate to. Turtle shell just being but thrown <laughs> ra- randomly. Outs- outside of that, I think it would be best if uh, you just leave your kids at home for that Just, just <laughs> drop a kid down a pipe all year. That's all I got. Still, you got news for us? I have, uh, it's very short news, very short news. The Outer Worlds, the second and final DLC, will be releasing on March 17th. Now, this is a uh, murder on Iridanos, and it's a murder mystery kind of dealio. You got to interrogate people. You got to cross-check alibis. Uh. It's fun, as well as, you know, um, new weapons, new perks, new flaws, new armor, big, out of, new Outer Worlds. So, that'll Did be fun. Did you say it was fun? It'll it'll be fun. Okay. For I guess, someone. I guess fun subjective. Fun yes, it, it is. It is. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not, is. This is not a universal fun for Dan everybody. said, Wow, a lot of people are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh and finally you know, I'm sorry. for my <laughs> that's not <laughs> for my little a little little bit of news, the Bethesda Xbox well, I guess Xbox Bethesda merger. Fusion, ha, completed, all signed, pretty little bow. This means that um, all of ZeniMax Studios, everybody, all the studios that are under that are now a part of Microsoft and Xbox. And also, available on Game Pass. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so what this means is, you know, we have people, writers, studios that now have the support and more resources. So I, on paper, this sounds like it should be good. We will find out what happens. And that's all my news. MPS5 people won't be pissed. No, they, no. They, I think they said Elder Scroll Six is still going to be they, for boo. Yeah, now they're saying that now. <laughs> As, I mean, I can see Microsoft being petty. And I, <laughs> Psych, you thought <laughs> you thought. <laughs> but uh, in news on my end, we have a few things. So uh, first, if you have read anything current for uh, Spider Man, the Amazing Spider Man, he has now a new costume. Uh, they're not like I mean so far fans you know long reading fans are like why but the same these same long reading fans have also been fans of like the Iron Spider armor or the Mark 5 armor you know, so just read the comic book stop stop complaining there's obviously a reason why he has a new comp- new costume and I know I said stop complaining and I'm I'm me. So <laughs> no, I, I felt I felt it. I felt your eyes. You don't have to look. Bob Ross are like, wait. <laughs> right? I'm confused. Is this a new character arc? <laughs> You're right. Did they retcon Dan, Big Dan's character? 
there's like a thousand dollars worth of equipment. And I'm trying not please, to spit beer please. all over. <laughs> um, there's possible rumors for the Avengers series currently running uh, with the Enter the Phoenix or the Battle for the Phoenix Force and the Avengers storyline. Uh, that whoever wins it will be the next upcoming villain for the Avengers. Uh, but there's still other stuff that they've laid the groundwork for in the Avengers that they have yet to address, uh, such as Dracula, such as the uh, Squadron Supreme now being the American Avengers, essentially replacement for Avengers. <clears throat> so if they're doing all of this, I don't know. Jason Aaron was doing such a good job mm. with Thor and his previous other work that I'm worried that he, they they gave him this and overworked him too quickly. And now he's just like, oh, I got to come up with something. And now, <laughs> you know, throw a bunch of, like, pieces of salami up against the wall. And he's like, it works. So, uh, that's... We, we going to add him, too. <laughs> I mean, I like Jason Aaron, so... I'm. But anyway, uh, the last thing in the comic book world, Keanu Reeves dropped his uh, Berserker oh. comic book. Um... I want to see where it goes, but you guys complain. To be fair, (laughs) (laughs) to be y'all already know where this is coming from. To be fair, right? Uh huh. His character or the protagonist um, in the story is very Wolverine esque, very and we have those immortal esque, you know, eternal warrior, jaded, upset. I've lived for a long time. Vandal Savage type vibe. Mm-hmm. And not to say it's been done before. But we are interested in what they do differently. But it's been done before. But are you interested in what they I do? I am. Differently? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give it <laughs> so what I normally do so that people don't think I'm just a jerk. No, oh, right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no one thinks Stan's a jerk. No, they do. And it's fine. That's the character I've built around this. Uh but I normally give things at least like five issues for okay. comic books. Okay. And if they don't work beyond five issues for me, I might miss out on something wonderful. But if it takes you five issues to set up something <coughs> iconically different from everything else that exists, maybe you're taking too much time. So, uh, in TV and movie news, uh, <coughs> next week, or the 19th, Falcon and Winter Soldier drops Yes, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Yep. So if you still are itching from the uh, fever itch that WandaVision has left you. And now for something completely different. Something completely different. <laughs> to uh, not really scratch that right. itch, but you know. <laughs> but it's out there. So um, Baron Zemo, Bat Rock is also coming in as a, introduced as a villain. So for anyone who knows who Bat Rock is and is excited. Let us know. So let um, us know in the comments. <laughs> I want to be excited for this show just because I think Falcon is he could be a cool character. I think I so. think it sucks that he's he's Falcon and like his coworkers are like Captain America, <laughs> Iron Man, <laughs> like right. the Hulk, right? Like I think if he wasn't if they Hawkeye, Hawkeye is also his coworker, you know. That's so, true. He is better. That's, than that's what I was gonna say. I feel like he's. He's not A tier. Yeah. Right. He's not S tier, obviously. But he's, he's a really strong B tier. Strong personality on the B on the B tier. Because <laughs> um, surprisingly enough, like Black Widow is still like A tier. But is she? she yeah. is. Yeah. Because she got hands. She got hands and she's like a multi tool for like what do, what do you need done? She's very like getting it done but not like in a glamorous way where right. it's like what happened she's like oh i totally hacked that system so we're fine or, like, oh. I, or i killed a bunch of people and off don't worry about sc- it off screen off screen <laughs> but don't worry about it it's <laughs> been handled I, um, so i guess that would be something that comic book readers would know yes, yes. because yeah. i feel like the way that oh, they MCU presented her black widow and, soft yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> don't I like, can't have baby <laughs> <laughs> i think she's very black um, widow and she's yeah it's supposed. I think it's a lot of like a pl- implied stuff. Like, oh yeah. no, she's cool. She like she got she can. Like she they got did the skills. interrogation scene yeah. where she's like tied up and then right. she's like, I'm kind of busy at the moment. Yeah, and I was like, all right. They they imply things, but like you never. It's like no, no. Mm. She she doughy in the middle is what they saying. <laughs> is it soft? But same with Hawkeye. Same with Falcon. Unfortunately, 
because uh, he has like a whole telepathic connection with a bird in the comic books. Yo, oh yeah, oh. yo, that was when he became Captain America. That was one of the first things where yeah. they're like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, summons like this flock of birds. He can talk to birds. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But not like, and how's that going to like translate on MCU? Right? Maybe so. they'll do it. Maybe no, they, they gave will. him a robotic <laughs> Red Wing. It was bad. It'll so, be. It'll be good. We'll Probably. see how that plays out. Um, Baron Let's Zemo is the main villain, but Zemo was done incorrectly, in my opinion, through Civil War. Ooh. So if they rectify it, great. If they don't, I was right. And, you know. <laughs> Take it out. Here, right here, right, <laughs> right, now, here, right now. Episode 6. <laughs> Y'all yeah. seen it. Um, <laughs> but they have a lot of opportunity to do some of the Ed uh, uh, Brudebaker stories. Mm. Um, so hopefully they do those. Last but not least, uh, Invincible drops the 26th. I was incorrect about that maybe a few episodes ago. But on the 26th of March uh, is when it releases. They drop three episodes. I'm highly, highly, highly excited about that. Uh, it's, to me, one of the best superhero comic book series ever created. And so for it to translate on TV, looking forward to it. Uh, there's also rumors of Why the Last Man. Still being in production. There's no way. What? The, it showed up in some AMC uh, trailer of like a super cut of like all the shows that they're working on, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and why the last man is in there. So, gotta uh, go back. Time for the reread, boys. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have for news. The reviews are one review. One review. One very. Y'all knew it was coming. Y'all had to know. We did it uh, for the culture. If you go on your Amazon Prime, it will tell you that it's the number one movie in the world. Um, That's fluffed. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it, it, I definitely it, think we showed out for it. Yeah, it's like how many people clicked on to watch it, not how many people enjoyed it at the end of it, right? Like, oh, you and didn't. that lets you know where Josh is. At. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> that's the review. We're done. <laughs> He's like, I think, regardless of how I telegraph this punch, you won't feel every piece of this. No, <laughs> I just, I think that's the main thing where they they are counting clicks. They're not yeah, they're counting, counting. They're counting the views. Reviews. They're not counting right. So, you know the reception of it. They're right. counting the fact that it's been watched. Yeah. So, um, as you already can tell, we're talking about coming to, to coming America. To America. Ah, John Legend. He is, uh, John he Legend did. did his thing. Man. He did. He did. I gotta give him that. I, Especially that was actually like one of my favorite parts. Not even in the movie. It's actually a credit. <laughs> so, um, Josh, since you showed your hand, <laughs> go ahead and uh, tell us how you really I, feel. I like your opinion, buddy. Here, <laughs> Here's what I have. Here are the notes I have. <laughs> First note. <laughs> first first point. <laughs> Note one of forty six. I wish we had like the rustling of paper so you could hear it. <laughs> no, no, Josh be playing people when I when they be rustling paper. So he ain't got no paper. Josh believe in a paperless society. No, no, no. Oh goodness. He's like one of forty seven. First, uh pick one story to tell. I think having it be about um one, his daughters coming into uh, their their full being as a piece of sovereignty is one story. And then having your bastard son being found out after 30 years is another story. Um, I think you should just pick one. I personally thought that you should have just that they should have just stayed with the daughter story and that they didn't need the bastard son thing. I think you could have. Oh, this actually segues into my um, into one thing. Um with relying or having the new character shine out. Mm-hmm. I think if you stick with the daughter story, uh, the new general Izzy, Wesley Snipes character, um, and his son being introduced uh, would definitely be like, that would be something that you could actually add more to the story with and still have it be like, m- you know, meaningful. A, a meaningful, yeah. well-telling story. Yeah, I think that was a waste of a cast. Um yeah, wrote Timmy being there, and I was like, "Oh, he's a good actor." He showed up for like thirty seconds. Well, go ahead. I yeah. don't even think he like he had lines. He had two, maybe. Yeah, he had, he did have many. Spoiler, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this uh, is going to be a very spoiler filled review. <laughs> Some callbacks were funny, like the one leg hopping, one leg hopping woman, mm-hmm. woman um, barking like a dog. I thought that was like actually really funny to see her 
in the same dress, like still in that position. Um, but then others weren't that necessary, such as the joke of the uh, you sweat from a baboon's balls. Like the first time I heard it, it was it was funny. That time I I didn't think it was necessary. I think I think they they tried to make it like a statement of a joke, and I was just like, if you would have just slipped it in like underhand, that would have been even better. Yeah. It probably would have worked a lot better. But like the fact that it was like this big moment, and he said that I was like. Uh, I guess. Here's the, here's the thing he said. Mm-hmm. He said it before. He's saying it again. Laugh. <laughs> this is where you laugh. Because um, it's <clears throat> comedy gold. You know, that's that's one of the jokes that gets repeated when you're, like, at a family function and all of that. That's, a, that's what I'm assuming is how they thought that joke was supposed to go. So here's what I've heard, though. I've heard that, for better or for worse, people our age seem to feel kind of like I do where it's like I say I because I don't know what your reviews are (laughs) Um, but people like feel like I do where it's like it was it was okay but I wanted more from it where people who are older like enjoyed it from beginning to end and thought it was like very funny and that is all well and fine like you're you're welcome to those to those reviews that you have Uh, this is just my review um and yeah, so that's I yeah for it to have be coming back, it's just like eh, I I did want a bit more from it. Um, I think uh, it was okay to have some of the characters from the past come back. I didn't think all of them were needed. Um, like if you stick with the daughter story, you probably wouldn't need to go back to New York and see the the barber shop crew, um, because they weren't to me as funny as they were the first time around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's that's my review on it. Um, <clears throat> all that being said, it was an enjoyable movie. Um, I would never go back to Amazon Prime and just turn it on. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not gonna like Lazy Sunday. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me put on Coming to to America. Right? <laughs> nah, nah. And even if it like, I think the only way that I would actually end up watching it is if I was watching like. TNT on a lazy Saturday mm. and it came on and I was just like, eh, I guess you better, SVU, you better than me. I guess SVU isn't a thing, but like I'd probably just hit Netflix up. Oh me. no. Like, SVU like, going to get that marathon. I'm right. gonna go <laughs> <laughs> like, so um, I, I know how Stapler's going to react, but right. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it anyway. Yeah. Um, for me personally, uh, I give it, uh, I'd say 2.8. 2.7. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's just degrading over time. <laughs> I'd say two, 2.7 for me. Um, it wasn't horrible, but it just wasn't enough. 2.7. Socket glitch. Oh, no. I'm going last. <laughs> Big Dan over here charging his, his level three super. All right. I'm going a, I'm to a be quick because I know Big Dan got words, and y'all love Big Dan's words. They don't. They <laughs> really don't. I'm pretty sure... <laughs> At one point, it's just going to be y'all two being the blur bar. Absolutely. I'm going to be behind the camera. They'll be like, no, Big Dan, you be quiet. <laughs> you don't say a word. That's on our live shows. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I watched this film. There were moments that I laughed. Mm-hmm. Um, there were moments that I cringed. Definitely. I really enjoy Leslie Jones. I love Leslie Jones. So I really appreciated her she was just good. being her. And it wasn't like she outshined anybody. Like, it was... She was just her. Um, I like when we compare the points of conflict and the points of tension from coming to America or to coming to America uh, to the sequel. Like, I just don't like they built up in the second in the sequel movie. They built up next Doria as like, oh, they're going to attack. And, oh, they're going to attack. And it's like. And then they just got dealt with like, and that was, that was just it. And it was like, Oh, well we could have, we could have done that. It wasn't, it didn't need to be a real source of tension, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had, uh, Akeem transitioning into being a King and trying to not repeat the mistakes of the past. And like, sure. Like, all right, fine. Um, my, my question is like, how well does this movie stand on its own merit? Like as a movie without, without, the nostalgia factor. <laughs> now keep that in mind, y'all. Um, without the nostalgia factor of like leaning into the old movie, I at first I was going to give this a uh, no one no one needed this out of five 
But I realized, like, I don't care that this movie exists. It's not like a, it's not like Atlantis 2, My Lose Return, which I'm like, that movie's abysmal, and I lose, like, sleep over it existing. <laughs> so, it's... That's the movie you lose sleep over? <laughs> Dog, it's so bad. We'll talk about that off air, but okay. <laughs> okay. That's that's the movie that keeps you up at night. I All right. 2.5. 2, <laughs> 2. 2.5. Uh, Milo's return is what bothers you. <laughs> it's te- it's a terrible film. No, I'm bothered by your botheredness is what it is. Do you like that film? No, not really. It's abysmal. It is bad. We're but talking about coming we're to talking a, with you. <laughs> Butterflies, if you feel like Atlantis 2 is in any way, shape, or form defendable, I'm oh, I'm open. Let, let me know. At the blurb bar. Big that Dan. is not the review at the moment, but yes. Big Dan, you've been charging that level three super. Let me get that. That's Shinku. <laughs> Hadouken. Okay. Um, all right. So I have two scores. Okay. One's a nostalgia score. Okay. And the other is just as a flat out movie. As the movie stands. So I'll say the nostalgia score is 3.5. Maybe a four. I say four. Yeah. I'll give you all a four for every fan of Coming to America, the first one. This one does everything that you need it to do for people you haven't seen in a while. Eddie's been gone for a while. He has, yeah. He, you know, he's been taking, first of all, when you got money and you can just disappear and still make sure that everybody else around you is still eating, that's how you know you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you also made Pluto Nash, so I could understand why you disappeared. Disappeared. Now um, I think he had a movie with Ben Stiller about a tower. That was after, that but was, it was uh, was that Pluto. Money Heist. It was Money Heist or Tower oh, Heist. Tower Heist. I saw that. Yep. Um, but <laughs> you lose sleep over it. No, no. Um, but like Pluto Nash is considered to be like one of the worst movies ever made. So that's why well, I'll say Pluto Nash. Uh, but you know, I, Eddie came back. And he brought the team with him. And I, I appreciate that. I will say that first. As a celebration of black comedy and art, you know, black cinematography, like this was filmed on Tyler Perry's studio, mm. Rick Ross's oh, house. Was it? That's yeah. Cool. Mm. Um, <laughs> so that's why he was there. <laughs> that's why Rick Ross was there. Because they was in his house. Like, ugh. So, <laughs> um, like a bow. And, you know, like... To be honest, if you really pay attention to it, like there's generations of black comedians in that film, mm-hmm. like yeah. gen- like actual moments in black comedy history, littered throughout, not littered, uh, but sprinkled throughout the film in a way that I I appreciate it. Like you see Lunell, you see Michael Blackson, mm-hmm. um, Leslie Leslie Jones, mm-hmm. and Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah, Noah. Yeah, Trevor Noah. I was actually surprised by him. He was a highlight. Like, oh, he was a highlight. He was one of the best. One of the best parts of the movie. Um, Easily, Tracy Morgan was there. For some reason. Well, I mean, Tracy goes wherever he goes. He's like, yeah, hey, yo, I'm Tracy Morgan. That's what I am. You know, he just walked into a set. It's just like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. Eddie was like, just let him stay. So it is what it is. Um, I like Tracy Morgan. Tracy, please don't come for us. We are not that big. We're not that important. Definitely coming for you. Nah, at the blur bar, Tracy Morgan? Nah. No. <laughs> he, I, Tracy, I respect you, but I said what I said. Um, anyway. Um, okay. <laughs> um, as far as the callbacks were concerned, still talking about nostalgia for this. It was, it it did what it was supposed to do. We didn't get soul glow like we were supposed to. I, I really. <laughs> oh snap! Daryl wasn't in the film, was he? Daryl wasn't in it. Um, I feel like I read some article as to why he wasn't in it, but I didn't really care well, that much. That would be another thing. I'm like, but why is he here though? Bro? <laughs> right. Like, like he lost, right? He wasn't. He, wasn't, he <laughs> lost already. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like some of the focus shifted in the wrong directions. Like to Josh's point of just like tell tell a story, tell a story. Don't give us a lot of these subplots and then not really follow through on any of them. I think they all. They Lisa, all Lisa didn't. Up, Lisa didn't talk until like the final bro, act, the third act of the movie. Bro, it was wild. Yeah. It was it, it's borderline disrespectful. I it's, mean, there were a couple of times I'm like, when is he going to tell his wife? Right. How does his wife not know? Right. Like what? So, but. so you know, and then you're like, there there was the honorary moment of James Earl Jones, and I was like, give you know, obviously that was a give your flowers while while he's still here, and I was like, that's awesome. 
at the same time, I was like, that's a little long. It's a little long. <laughs> it did happen. It in happened. Vo- in occurred. Vogue. But I was like, in Vogue showed up. Uh, Morgan Freeman was just standing in the crowd. I was like, all right, cool. But like I said, this was a celebration of blackness, and I appreciated that part. Um, as a movie, I will say this movie was very akin to the sequel of Lion King. Deception. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because it was like, like Simba did the same thing of like mm-hmm. not really realizing like, oh, I want to be different, but I'm not. And Eddie Murphy was like, I want to be different, but I'm not. Eddie was like that in the first movie, 30 years go by, and he's like, oh, I'm not that different. And they pushed a whole like lifetime of experiences into a week mm-hmm. in the story, yeah. right? Because he had to he had a week to figure pass out how the, to be pass king. The Prince test, yeah, which didn't make sense because apparently now we can all pass a Prince test in a week. Because I would have done better than that. But <laughs> really, with the getting the whiskey from my line, I mean, there's apps for that. I feel like okay. It's probably not, and I would fail. Um, I'm being facetious. I believe in you, Big Dan. Nope, don't believe me. Believe I that I will have been eaten, and I would have been a quality meal for that line. Quality. Quality. <laughs> quality. You'd be like, oh, there's a little fat on this, but <laughs> I digress. So, uh, <laughs> uh, we they telegraphed a lot of the stuff that we saw coming. Softballed it in, really. So, it, it was just like, hey, this list of tropes. For a sequel, we got to hit every one of these. Hey, remember that one thing? Remember the twins <laughs> that was rapping? They here. <laughs> or it's like, you know, law over love type thing. And I was like, all right, well, we know he's going to fall in love with the groomer. And it, Dude, two seconds. Two, I mean, she walked in and I was like, like <laughs> so I've always done this thing where I'm like, count, I count the lines. <laughs> yeah, but no, I count the lines of like actors and actresses, right? Without mm-hmm. actually really, you know, paying attention to the story. Or enjoying a movie. And I'll be like, uh, right? Uh, so I'm sitting there and I was like, oh, she, she's saying a lot of words. <laughs> I was like, she'll be back. She'll be back in a bigger capacity. She will. She's the love interest. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I got the movie. I'm, I'm fine. And then I spent the rest of the movie counting the chicken wings that I was eating at the function that I was at. How, many, I how many chicken wings? It was about 35. So. Um, <laughs> Give or yes, take. They call me Big Dan for a reason. So, uh. I don't know. I feel like as black folks, I watched it for the culture. For the culture. And I mean, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm hating on it, but it it wasn't good. If this movie didn't exist, I think everyone would also be okay. I don't think there's one person who was like, oh man, this. But did did you feel like the first movie left you on a cliffhanger that would leave you tortured? No, it it wrapped up just fine. So... And I guess that like follows into our next thing, right? Mm-hmm. Nostalgia. Does it hold up? Wait. You never. How did. many gore? Yeah. How, how many, many? How many drinking horns? As a movie. Oh, as a movie. Anything. Oh. Two. Okay. I honestly one and a half. Like for real, for real. It wasn't. Oh, is that the lowest rating the Butler Bar has ever given? Did he say one and a half? Yeah. That's probably the lowest he's ever given yet. Oh, I mean, it's not historic, but like, be honest. It like, is, it's true. <laughs> like I said, I quantified it with the fact that if you put my nostalgia score and the regular movie score together. <laughs> did you say that? Are you saying that now? <laughs> I did. I opened with that. I said I had two high. scores. I said I had two scores, right? You did. So then you if, did you, say it. if you push them together, it comes out to like a three all overall for nostalgia factor and celebration of black culture. It comes out to a qual- okay movie. Anyway. The future content, right? Let's go. Does it hold up? So my compatriots and I have cultivated a list independently, so we don't even know what each other are going to mention here. I have no idea what's happening. But they're going to, we're going to list some things, and we're, the other two we're going to like try to come at it and see, does it really hold up to current, I would say, consumption? Standards like yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 media consumption media consumption and does it hold up or is it just nostalgia that allows you to keep holding on to this? Was it good or was it nostalgia? Was it was it good? The nostalgia glasses just powerful artifact. Yeah, <laughs> powerful <laughs> artifact. And that 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 rose 
lens filter that it gives oh, you. It's, it's just lovely. And then there's like a, a sense, right? Like in your nose, you're like, ah, oh, this takes me back to the good old days. The good old days. Yo, okay. Grandma Ma's making spaghetti with sugar in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, don't, don't play me like that, dog. <laughs> Don't distract me like that. <laughs> I said what I said. Um, who, all right, so what, what you got, Big Dan? Let's go. Let's let's talk about. Um, let's, let's take off these rose colored glasses. All right. And get so into my first it. one is Jurassic Park, the first movie. One. The first one. Yes. Is it good, or is it just nostalgia telling me that it is good? I'm gonna say that that movie is primo quality, Colombian. You cut it out, get pure. You're talking about coffee, right? No. I didn't say anything else. So It's Colombian coffee. Please continue. It's pure. Okay? It's pure. I tried. By the kilo. Pure. <laughs> it's not how you measure coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't infer anything else. I said Colombian, pure. 100%. Josh, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I watched. Ju- you said Jurassic Park is it Jurassic, Jurassic World? Or no, Park? Tra- Park? no world. God, what? That's like the fourth movie. So obviously, I haven't watched a lot of them because it just wasn't my twist. Um, but oh, dinosaurs uh, weren't your twist, even at like seven years old. Not really. Okay, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> But um, you see, I'm easily talked down. I, I am uh, nothing but hot air most times. Yeah, but uh, it was, um, I'm sure it was good for its time. Uh, mm. I've never, I've mm. never gone back. I've never had the inkling to go back and watch Jurassic Park, mm. even with all the new Jurassic Everything, series yeah. coming out. Uh, so, I think, on one hand, I want to say it might be nostalgia, but they have legit like brought about a whole series with it. So what do I know? I am just one, right? <laughs> and they've made their money, so they don't need my money. So, <laughs> um, But I would I would say personally, and it's probably nostalgia, mm. but I have not seen it mm. in, a, in a long time. So. Long time. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to go and say it is good. Okay. And why is that? Because I'm going to lean into the puppetry. Because the lit, the the time and devotion that went in, and it looks amazing still to this day. To this day, and it's because of the animatron and animatronics, the animatronics and the puppetry, and like building those machines to look the way it did. On, on top of influencing like how a society sees mm-hmm. dinosaurs, right? I mean. Um, life so there there's that i think so i'm gonna say it's really good on the even j- just off the artistry by itself and i will go back and watch it i will and i have multiple times it's it's a good one I like when was it. the last time you watched it i would say about two three years ago i thought you were gonna say two three days ago and no. i was like well, big dan is there, going I, I i am a i'm a dad now so the only things i see recently are like moana and coco and frozen two Every single day. Help me. Charge what you got. <laughs> uh, Jayhawk. <clears throat> I have Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Mm. Was it good or was it nostalgic? I'm going to tell you right now. It's nostalgia. It's not good. I'm I, uh, that's my that's my opinion. I'm, not, I'm out. I'm I go. would Y'all say. Y'all have a blessed night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'll be back. <laughs> I would say that Dan, it's... come back. <laughs> he's really, he's really. <laughs> he might be going to the bathroom. I don't know, but I nah, would say he's that, actually gone. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that it's nostalgia because I just didn't get it. I just didn't. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't get why it, would, it was like. It was like those if if it was on a Saturday morning lineup. It's one of those last shows that comes on that you're like, meh. I can go outside now. I've seen I've seen Yu Gi Oh right. I've seen Pokemon. I've seen Static. I, I saw Static. I can go outside. Now. I saw the Zeta Project. It's, it's over, right? I don't need Saturday morning cartoons. It's over. Nobody needs to watch this. That was my personal take on Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I didn't get it, so I'm gonna say it's nostalgia. He's back. I'm back. <laughs> I ain't got nothing else to say. 
You you said it's nostalgia. Already. It's nostalgia. I need so y'all both saying it's nostalgia now makes me need to reevaluate because it, like Ed Ed Nettie is so deeply personal to me because I watched all all of it. When's the last time was, you watched it? As it was coming out when I was a kid. That's fair. no 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 no. That's not true. I found out there was a <laughs> there's a YouTube channel that streams Ed Ed Nettie all day. That's all it does. And I watched a couple episodes. And thanks Wait, to the blur bar, so it will the, now be shut down. <laughs> when was that? It was like in early 2020. So like March 2020. March 2020, March you were watching it? Yes. I'm not like, you know, with any religious Roman fervor, status. But it was like, you know, I'm work from home now. Let's go. Um, I want to say it was actually good. Dude, it was, there are moments where I remember like being doubled over with laughter, dude. Like between... The, it's it's always like the sound bites and I really resonated when double and then there are just moments like when when Ralph fighting for his honor with with, with double with uh, Eddie and like when Ed, yo double D's breakdowns like, Acorn becomes a tree Acorn. <laughs> See, I think it was made for a different kind of child than I was. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> it means I have ADHD. Josh, no. that's what so, he means. That's so, what he's implying. So, hear me out. God. Hear me out. I don't want to say that. Because I don't but, have ADHD. But there was like cartoons that just for me were like, oh, these is meant for um, them kids that had like juice boxes all the time. Like the ones that just, like there was what kids that had Kool Aid. There was like kids who had Kool Aid and Juicy Juice, uh-huh. and then there was uh, some of us who had like mops. <laughs> you sound like you're getting ready to type up an HR report. <laughs> uh huh. Go on. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Anything else? Some of us had like mops. You know, it's just there was like a difference. Uh huh. I don't know. That, I'm being uh-huh. honest. Like you ever watch certain things, you just be like, oh, this is not for me. I'm not the target audience for this. That's, That's how, how I felt. The Zeta Project. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not putting anybody in a box. I'm saying when mm-hmm. I look at it, I was like, this art is weird. Like it was starting to it devolved from like the cow and chicken art. Uh, Very similar. It was cartoon, the, cartoon that era. It was cartoon, cartoon, but then it was just also like, I think it was right after. But it was almost like everything was drawn freehand. Great. I guess. But like, if you go back and look at some of these characters, they look like like some of them had like the. The soft spot in they had indented in. Like yeah, it was Johnny two by four. <laughs> so why you think we call him Johnny two by four? <laughs> so I I mean, all right. So yep. Now what now, would be hilarious is if like after this I go back and watch it and find it hilarious. It's so funny. Maybe that would will. be very it's funny. So good. But and I doubt I also, that'll happen. <laughs> I also haven't watched it in twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. Yeah. Same. So ooh. I I'm sorry. That went that went dark. Nah, that's okay. Now that we've confirmed my ADHD diagnosis, thank you, Big Dan. That's very Did, good. I'm no I'm no doctor. I um <laughs> even though my, my initials say it, I'm not. Do you are? Oh, oh, you're in the Dominican Republic. Oh snap. Okay. Oh. Um <laughs> where where <laughs> But you don't have ADHD. I d- <laughs> Is it good or was it nostalgia? <laughs> My pick is going to be, and I would love to hear both of your opinions on this. Kingdom Hearts 1. Now, very important, Barflies. I'm not talking about Kingdom Hearts 1.5 for PS3 or PS4. No. I am no. talking about the OG, clunky ass, no triangle having head ass, Kingdom Hearts 1 for PS2. Because I think it's nostalgia, actually. And then people, when they go back and when they play it, now they have 1.5. So, like, they don't have to go back and play the PS2 version unless you're really determined. Mm. I would like your opinion, Sean. And your glasses. <laughs> I don't know. Is that, like, a Nubian? Like, <laughs> a Nubian, Nubian side effect? Strikes. But... <laughs> <laughs> It definitely was a Nubian side effect. Definitely was. Oh, you got to go get some water, bro. (laughs) Um, (laughs) He needs some milk. (laughs) Um, I'm going to say Kingdom Hearts 1. 1. All right. PS2. I'm going to say nostalgia, but I'm going to quantify it with the fact that I'm going to qualify it with the fact that it's a legendary 
arc, right? Like Kingdom Hearts now is considered legendary. But the singular game uh, in and of itself is nostalgia. You can't, because it's almost unplayable now. No, I think it's actually... It's unplayable if you're talking about going back to the PS2 version, not PS2. Think about the cramps in your hands right now that you're I don't probably wanna, thinking I don't, of, like, I don't like want just trying to, to hold that the controller. The unskippable cutscenes, exactly. Thing. The unskippable cutscenes. There's there's technology now that has progressed so far that our hands are now coddled, and <laughs> to the point of like we can't experience that kind of discomfort anymore. So, <laughs> can't so, be privileged to such things anymore. I such, mean, such know, luxuries of life. <laughs> I need my padded <laughs> controllers now. Like my arrow, argo, uh, what is it? Ergonomics. Ergonomics. Er, something. Er, ergonomics. Er, ergonomics. Ergonomics. Er, 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 yeah, <laughs> it's hitting. There it is. <laughs> there it is. You found it. So, no, I'm going I'm to say it's nostalgia. <laughs> like, people enjoy Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Kingdom we, Hearts 2 is untouchable. Are, but we are <laughs> slowly... Going down the scale of um, this episode. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I think I haven't played. I have actually never played it. But I remember I had a friend who was like all about it. He like he, <laughs> he must have been insufferable. <laughs> he, <laughs> that's funny. And his name um, was Sterling. It was me. <laughs> it was. It was me <laughs> all along. <laughs> it wasn't, but that's hilarious. Um, he was so into it. That when we went over his house to play video games, that was the one game we could not play. Like we, he, no, you're not playing my Kingdom Hearts. And it, like I didn't get it because I was I was there to play Wipeout anyway. True. Right? So okay. like, <laughs> I was there to play Wipeout or like Street Fighter or whatever fighting game he had. So I was like, I'm King of Fighters. <laughs> like keep your keep your Kingdom Hearts. I really I don't need to. I don't need to play it. Um, that being said, uh. It sounds like it was a very cool concept at the time. And it sparked a whole, like, once again, kind of like with the Jurassic Park franchise, um, it sparked a whole franchise out of it. Uh, so was it good? It was good enough to get a franchise. I haven't played it, though, so I would say nostalgia. Okay. And that's where we are. Let's keep it going. All right. I, I like this. This is great. Uh, so I guess it's back to me, right? Um, also, yes. Also, bar flies. Uh, one, take a moment, get some water, and then come back. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let us know where you fall. Where you fall on all these topics? We need. We need to know. I got a big one for y'all. All right, I'm not got a ready. Big one. Is it Mrs. One. Doubtfire? No, no, <laughs> no. I am uh, not educated enough to set that one up, so I won't. And I love Robin Williams, so I won't do that. Uh, that's a bad way. <laughs> it actually is. It's uh, <laughs> it's the Batman animated series. Okay, keep going. Is it good? Like good, or mm-hmm. is it nostalgia okay. that just tells us it's good? Right. Do you want to go first on that? I'm I'm gonna give my opinion. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for big things. So. Thanks. <sighs> I'm conflicted. And I'm I'm gonna be I'm being honest. Like I, I set this one up because I knew that it would bother me more than it probably bothered either one of y'all. Um having rewatched it this year, beginning of this year. That's important. Mm-hmm. Um I'm gonna say it's nostalgia. There are singular episodes that are iconic to the point where I'm just like, this is great television across the board. There's other episodes where I'm like, yo, we sat through this <laughs> and we were like, can't wait for next week. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, obviously now we have culture taste and, you know, a little bit more like refined palates as far as what we consume as far as media. And, you know, you start noticing changes in art shifting in like, you know, direction. And then when you also realize like the stuff that they censored back then for us to, you know, even be allowed to watch it on TV. Yeah, it's true. Um, even though Bruce Tim was like very adamant about like sneaking stuff in there, they were. I mean, the censors were like, "Nah, you can't." And it was, it was one of the first TV shows to have like guns, not like blasters or like ray guns or like like guns. Yeah, but they always never hit anybody. So <laughs> I think it's nostalgia for me. 
and I, I think I, in admitting it's my nostalgia, I'll still go back and watch it, and then just watch my episodes that I like that I feel like are really good. What about you guys? I'm, I'm gonna pass it to you because you, I think you're the expert here. Not at all. Um, but I, I will say I think it was good. Uh, I didn't watch it this year, but I did watch it last year, um, or maybe a year and a half ago. And there was never a time where I felt like I was bored watching it. Mm, that's that's big. That's big. There was never a time that I felt like, eh, didn't need like didn't need this episode or like didn't like. It's like no, like each episode because another thing with that uh, series is that there weren't a lot of like huge arcs. Like there aren't a lot no, of like part ones, part twos. So like each episode is very standalone. was like a very much like standalone comic book issue type thing. Like and this, I, I agree with you. This is this is the this is the the event that we are dealing with this episode. Um, and there's never a time that I was just like, eh, I'll skip it. Like I watched it and I was like, this is all enjoyable. I would definitely buy like the DVD set and like, just like when I, if I were to ever have a kid, like that would definitely be on Saturday. Like, boy, like you don't watch <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons. We watch the end. Dr. McStuffins. Series. Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Gabba who? <laughs> <Da-da-da. laughs> And so it's just like um, I'm gonna say that it that it's good. Mm. I'm gonna say that it's good, and I would have to wonder and ask you. You said that there are episodes that you didn't care for, and then there are episodes that you really like. I would wonder how much are how much are in each bucket in each of those buckets. Because if there's more that you actually like, I that I would then you would even, ask me to re- reevaluate. I would push my... more that it it was good. But that's for you to to work and pray on well, <laughs> on your own time. Well, like I said, I'm I'm conflicted by it because I feel like having watched episode by episode, right? Like I did that. That's how I went yeah. back and did that this year, like from beginning to end. Yeah. And I was like, mm. Mm. third episode, kind of rough. But you know, it was also it was also from a time where rough was a thing. So, yeah. um, but. Uh, to answer Josh's question as to what's in which bucket, then yeah, I mean, and you said that you would go back and watch it again. I would, but I, like I said, from the feel for the nostalgia feels like of me being a kid, you know, giant bowl of cereal, wildberry pop tarts. I wasn't that blessed in that home. My home was not wildberry pop tarts. We weren't allowed <laughs> to have those. I snuck wildberry. Pop tarts into my home one time. Did you stop admitting it on a recorded line? <laughs> no. Nope. I'm grown now. I'm only half. I'm I only buy half, my own Wildberry Pop Tarts. Now. <laughs> I'm only half afraid. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was not allowed. We weren't allowed to have Wild Wildberry Pop Tarts. It was plain strawberry. <laughs> You're gonna like it. They weren't even Kellogg brand. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, the, the witch would call it from Save a Lot. The three pack. <laughs> it's the three pack. It was what it was uh <laughs> strawberry, blueberry, and chocolate, and I think. It was fruit preserves inside inside of them bad boys. Um and wheat. <laughs> Sterling, what would you, how do you feel about Batman the animated series? <laughs> Batman the animated series, I will admit, I'm gonna say this. I have not watched this since I was a child. Mm. Uh when it was when I was a child. Amazing, of course. Um Bruce Tim's work still like it's just just fantastic, you know. Um, I think I am going to say, I, I think I'm going to opt out and just say no. Like I I haven't watched it in so long. I don't think I don't know if I can say. Would I, would I go and watch Boo. it again? Boo that man right Boo. now. Well, I guess that means Boo. it's nostalgia, right? Like I would go and watch it right now. On the strength of like, oh yeah, I love this from like, back in the because of the strength of back in the day. Yeah, because like, I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is the thing I love. The internet tells me I love this. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you're gonna have to answer this question because <laughs> or no, no, get out. No, right no, no, not right now though. But I think you're gonna have to actually go back and watch it mm-hmm. and then come, <clears throat> excuse me, come back and say it because I remember when I thought. I remember Thundercast. That was really cool. Like, I want to go back and watch it. And then I went back and watched it. I was like, oh, you were nostalgia. Like, what have I done? <laughs> nostalgia. <laughs> I still love it. I probably would still watch it. But, but you know what you're but, getting but into. But I definitely now. know for a fact. 
Because you haven't done that yet, right? No. You said you, you, the last time you watched it when you was a kid, and I Damn. watched it. And I was Josh like, made me feel like I had to change my answer. It's, um, <laughs> I, I, it's, I, it's good. It's good. It, it's good. You can say that. Wait, so, so no, I just there, wanted I, to disagree like, I was with doing, you. I was doing the math. I was doing the math of like what, how many more? Like you know, I start talking about the Great Ghost episode, like you know the Ooh, movies. Yeah. Um, you know Did the they man, do hush? the guy. They do hush? Uh, I don't know if they did hush, I but I know they did. Um, Mask of the Phantasm and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. you start adding those in, and then the man who killed Batman, like that episode is like iconic to the max. Mark Hamill just being Mark Hamill and being the face. <laughs> All right, it was good. <laughs> he talked himself. I down. talked myself into it. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Still good. Still good. Still good. Uh, is it my turn? Who's going? It's Josh's turn. Josh. Uh, was it good or was it nostalgia? Mm. I'm really sorry for all you people who will feel away. Mm. 90s music. And when I, I, need, say, I need more detail. When I say 90s I need music, are you saying like 90s music, like six, six pence the rich, you know, six pence none the richer? When I say 90s music, uh-huh. I'm probably talking actually late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. okay. Um, and a lot of that, I think, like. The all of the boy bands, Jagged Edge, Backstreet Boys, and Black Street. Black Street. Was it good? Ninety eight degrees. Ninety eight degrees. All of that. Are you putting Maya in there as well? Are you putting sure. JoJo in there? Are you putting S no Escape is nineties for me? So. S Club Seven. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness yeah. me. Goodness. Um, no, the TV like show. Club. Yes, they it was. Did. And I yes. watched every episode, when it, even until it got canceled. I have feelings now. <laughs> but it's nostalgia. But go ahead. Jesus. So we will talk about why it. Why did you? Okay. Anywho. I watched every episode of S Club 7. I don't understand. More why. than one. Stop saying it on the recording. <laughs> I watched the special episodes. I don't understand. I don't know. What Tina are. was doing her dance. Joe was looking for a romance. I know the song. So, <laughs> 90s music. I'm sure they were going to. Was it good or was it nostalgia? There was Joe. She got the. Oh, man. Da- I, Daniel, yeah. stop. <laughs> Everybody get ready because here we go. S Club. Was it good? All right. So, it I. It was. Oh, man. For it's me. It's nostalgia. <laughs> you just tired of people popping off on karaoke? <laughs> that's a, that sounds like a personal thing. These are, aren't all of these? <laughs> yeah, but no, this one sounds like <laughs> are this, all of these not this our feels own subjective like, feelings. <laughs> this feels like you got aggressions against people for karaoke. I don't have aggressions. I just don't understand why it's still a thing. I just don't. But kind of nostalgia, right, exactly. <laughs> but like, it's not because it's like it's not like necessarily good music. I don't. Okay. All right. All right. I think it's just I think, man. I think Big Dan, if you don't want to take it, I got it. Okay. All right. So approaching this, uh Barflies, if you do not know, um went to high school to study music and then I went to undergrad to study music. So approaching this from a music theory standpoint. Talk there to the mic. Are, thank you. <laughs> Hello. So <laughs> approaching this from a music theory standpoint. There are things in combinations of progressions, combinations of chords that just kind of we hear them as humans and we're like, yeah, yeah, that's OK. Yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling it. Um, it's the one, four five for all my other fellow musicians. But the specific progression <laughs> is everywhere <laughs> in 90s music. But they were doing the best that they could with what they had. Technology boomed. We mm. have a whole bunch of stuff. It's very accessible. Now we, we had everything born of SoundCloud. And go ahead. You got words. No, I'm listening. No, I, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. Um, it just brings up a point that I guess to even more specify uh, like pop music, like like the Britain, stuff that was like in like Britney. top forty top stuff. Okay. Like, Spice Girls. Because like. Wait, I, you, you don't want to hear Wannabe? That's not your jam? Tell me right, right now. Wannabe is not, not your jam right talking? now. If you want to be my lover. Oh, no. The Spice Girls. No. So, like, I was one who was listening to, like, Linkin Park. Okay. And, uh, like, I guess Gorillas around that time. Yes. Stuff like that. Okay. Like, so I wasn't really 
list like I didn't care for for those like for they were bowling for soup. Yeah, I just I didn't for care yellow for card. So I think I think mainly and to this day I'm not a huge fan of top forty, but <laughs> but but like nineties like top. I mean 40, I feel like Linkin Park 90s. made top forty. Oh, 100 percent. In the end, hundred percent. And, and, and Gorillas was definitely on top forty Gorillaz at was one definitely point. Definitely early two thousands. So definitely. how but many of their songs were on there? Gorillas had at least three. Nah, so mm. Demon Days didn't come out till 05, actually. Oh. So Gorillaz was out in 01. And even and on Demon was... Days, how many of their songs would have been on Top 40? How many Listen, of their oh, songs right, right. were listening right. to the Listen, radio? You're right. You're right. So Linkin you're Park, right. same thing. Thank you. They had two, but they Thank were you. on the Top I rest 40. My case. I rest my case. I'm just saying. I rest my case. I said what I said. I know, and you're wrong. It's fine. <laughs> so it's like, when I, so those music, so like, um, Bye Bye Bye. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't need it. So you're, you're really coming after like the pop pop. Like yeah, pop, pop. I, that's what I said. I okay. think at what point did pop really become a genre? Was it like the Beatles or something? Like when did pop really I, become? I, like I think a, we, for us, pop us, is them. Is like them. Britney, us is you know us is them in, in those moments. This is going to be, yeah, yeah. I, I to his point, I don't know if you ever answered. I am going to say it was good that it. It was good for its time, meaning it's nostalgia. Okay. <laughs> it was good. They did the best they could with what they I've had. I've never seen someone toe the line so bad. <laughs> you were just like, I'm going a- I'm to go back to school to be a poli sci major. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to walk. <laughs> Shots. <laughs> poli sci is a thing. What? Political science? Yes. Yeah. You were just like. I mean, it just sounded like you. you sound like you. Do a shot at him. You really did. The political science major? Yeah. Like, yes. Please continue before I pop Whoa. off. Please <laughs> Where is this going? So, um, I'm going to say this nostalgia because, like, you know, as Josh triggered the memory of S Club 7, I went back and watched some of the music videos that I was, like, enthralled with at that age and was just like, mm-mm. They did the best they could with what no, they had, no, no, though. No, no, no. Listen, Okay. I went back and I was like, let me watch this. Now there are times where I will go back and watch in sync and be like, no, nah, this still Bob. Yeah. This, this still, yo, you can say whatever you want, but bye, bye, bye dog. <laughs> Untouchable. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. Back, back streets back. That's that movie. That music video is still really cool. Actually. I, I don't was, need it. it. Yeah. You don't need it, but cause and you already had thriller. So you don't need it. You um, can't compare. You can, and you will. And therefore they lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> oh. uh-huh. But um, I don't. I mean, it's nostalgia because for real, for real, you can't now, especially with like all the stuff that's being uncovered for, um, like Britney's life, and it was wild. It was wild, and dark days are upon us, and you know it is what it is. Like you, when you go back and you start breaking down that stuff, like you know. The discrimination that Scary Spice faced, and mm. all you start looking at these things from now the woke lens, or like the the filter is taken off, or it's in HD. It don't look as pretty. <laughs> well, that that is one thing I'm particularly talking about the music, but yeah. I, I see what you're saying. But I'm but no, like the me. but but I often feel like music is often a reflection of life or where we are, it's right? True. Like it's often the same with art. At any point in time, like it's always a reflection of that time and, and Maybe what it was. I'll be all turned, all I don't need it. Stop you don't it. need it Turn because it there's other there's other better music out there that talks about a wedding, and you'd be like, okay, I, I'll choose that song over that song. Because um, he was just like, let's get married, but it seems so flippant, right? He's just like, baby, let's <laughs> get married. What you, what you doing Saturday, yo? Like, uh, I'm get married. Hey, I'm get married. Maybe I'll yeah. be all turn your waitress. And I was like, and then he's just like, we're not getting younger. And I was like, oh, so you really don't really care about this, this I life, need something locked in. This life right decision now. you're making. I need something <laughs> locked in. My mama says something better than nothing. Right. So And apparently he was facing some legal trouble because he moved fast. <laughs> What's your credit look up? You know, it actually never mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's nostalgia. I, I anybody that says otherwise. Obviously, we're not talking about early '90s. Early '90s still feels very much a part of the '80s when you talk about. But that's music. yeah, that's how transitions go, right? Like, like anything, they don't right? they don't really find themselves. But I still feel like 
<sighs> they did the best. But I feel but like yo, we also Michael, got Kiss from a Rose though. We did, but then also Michael was also in the nineties and two thousands with uh, Invincible. Yeah, Earl O one dude. So you know, but it's still nostalgic because that's Invincible wasn't that great of an album. It was fine, oh, but it's not no, his. No, 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 it's not his Inve- best. I went back. I went back it's and listened not, to Invincible. It's good. It's fine. It's, it's good. very nice. It's very because it came out. I think it came out in one. So yeah. it's like it's very nineties. It's good, but it's not his other albums, bro. Go but listen. We're not, we're not going to sit here and say that it's better than Thriller. It's not like Invincible, very weak, weak Michael album, definitely. Especially when you go back and listen to Off the Wall. Off the Wall just like does not stop, dude. That's, it what, start, that's, that's it, all I'm yeah, saying. I'm not yeah, saying you're right. I, I got it. I get you. I get you. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm about to go home, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it quick with my last one. I think we're gonna have to wrap up after this one. What do you think? Of man? course, yeah. why not? Um, my last one is going to be uh, in the in the realm of anime. FLCL. See now that one I haven't seen. So I you haven't seen FLCL? No, I did not know that. Um, now I went back and watched it in 2020, late Ooh. 2020, late in the summer. I went back and watched FLCL. I watched Progressive. I watched Alternative and like Shotgun. Watching it, and it, that is. Very good. It is not just the nostalgia. The style, the nostalgia amplifies it, but it also is a cool coming of age story. Um, very drastically different than anything else that was on because it came on two thousand, dude. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable, but very drastically. Different. What do you, What do you think, Jay? Uh, so the last time I watched FLCO might have been when When did Progressive and Alternative come out? I want to say like 2017, 2018. Oh, jeez. Then, yeah, then the last time I, I rewatched FLCO was around that time because mm-hmm. I meant to progress to alternative and progressive and or alternative and, yeah, progressive. Yeah. And I just never got around to it. Um, so I want to say it's good because I that's the last time I watched it and I just remember still enjoying the entire show. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if three years ago, four almost four years ago now, would be uh, – would be grounds for me to say like, it's good for sure. It still might be nostalgia. Um, but I remember it being very good. Uh, and I would, I would definitely go back and watch it again. I probably should with, uh, it's three hours, three hours of your time. It's going to go on my list. So I can, yeah, but I I would probably say it's good, but as, as for it, Sticking to the own standards that I have set for this panel, I would say <laughs> I need your bucket. When it's, when it's the good bucket, when it's the less than good nostalgia. bucket. <laughs> but I believe that it's good. But it, but yeah. So, all right. Well, what do you guys? It's think? the last call. We've done it <laughs> for alcohol. We've done it. Tell yeah, us what you think about all these hot. Takes. All of these hot takes. <laughs> there were feelings that were felt and had. And um, I was diagnosed with ADHD. It's great. <laughs> and I understand I am everything. Further now. digging myself into the pit of being the cynical, pessimistic jerk. Of Nobody the three. thinks you're a cynical, no, pessimistic jerk. No, it, it's I'm trying to fight it and trying to be more I upbeat. But then Josh mentioned S Club Seven, and then things went downhill. So um, <laughs> the XP for this episode, uh, tasking out twenty five XP and a special item. Ooh, what's the item? As you can see on my man Sterling's face there, we have glasses. And they are equipped with the nostalgia filter. Yes. So anything that you would like to go back and watch and enjoy, put those glasses on and enjoy them. Um, or you can take them off and then realize that, like, it probably is going to make you cringe. That's Club 7. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Samurai Pizza Cats. <laughs> so. <laughs> Samurai Pizza Cats. The um, doors are closing. The yeah. lights are going off. You enjoy your day, your evening, and we will see you on the next episode of The Blur Bar. Good night, everybody.